Is there an evolutionary connection to the deja vu experience? Thank you both for your authenticity. Much love to you both. Um, yeah, I've got two little stubs of a hypothesis here. One of yeah. them not ours in any way, which has to do with the fact that the two sides of the brain process the same information. And in general, they don't understand themselves to be processing separately because the corpus callosum unites things in some sort of synchronized way, but that a slight desynchrony could result in something arriving in a way like it had, uh, like it was late to the party. And so the initial one and the follow on would not match up and it would feel like you'd seen it before. I've never quite bought this one because- That seems like it's too much too short a time scale. Right. Like deja vu the, tends to be about, you know, days, weeks, years. Right. Down the road. So the- So that's the one that's not yours. Right. Yeah. Um, my hypothesis has to do with the fact that, it's also a very mechanistic hypothesis. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. proximate. Yeah. Um, so what I would say is what we must be doing, what we can infer from the way life is and the way we experience it. Imagine that you are walking through a city that you know somewhat, but you are walking down a street that you've never walked down before into a plaza that you've walked into, but not from that direction. You have to recognize it as the same plaza. So you're yeah. doing some sort of interpolation where you have some model of the plaza and you have some idea of what it would look like from a slightly different angle. And so the point is that thing is a detector for familiarity. And to the extent that you might walk into something that would trip the detector, but not actually be the place, you might have the sense of, I've been here before and that something like that. This, uh, this feels very much in keeping with my anecdotal addition to what you're saying is that the last two moves that we've made, uh, which would have been uh, tw 20 years ago from Ann Arbor, Michigan to Olympia, Washington, and then three, almost three years ago from Olympia, Washington to Portland, Oregon. Um, all, so Ann Arbor and Olympia are kind of comparable in size, very different in feel, but both mm -hmm. college towns and uh, Portland is, is bigger, um, <clears throat> but it has, it's also in the Pacific Northwest. So Portland both, is bigger, Ann Arbor is colder and hotter. <laughs> both colder <laughs> and hotter. Um, Culturally, Portland and Ann Arbor have more in common. Olympia is kind of a backwater. Um, but uh, but the Pacific Northwest stuff, that anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, in both cases, um, for quite a number of years, well, after, after the move to Olympia, and I'm still experiencing it um, in Portland, I'll go someplace and be like, oh, I know this place. Like, no, actually, the, the thing I'm remembering is very precisely Olympia, and I can, I can put where it is. And I was doing that with regard to walking around Olympia and finding myself someplace and going like, oh, right, I didn't remember. Oh, no, that's you know, half a continent away. That was actually in Michigan. Yeah. Um, so it, it, the question that, you know, the prediction, if that, if, if it's that sort of misplaced familiarity, um, is that this is a modern artifact of the fact that we move into very unfamiliar places sort of suddenly, as opposed to wandering into new spaces. And, um, we, we can thus trick ourselves. Our brains can imagine, oh, you're just in the place you've always been. Like, no, actually I've, I've taken quite a big leap. Well, I, I think what you're saying would be that if you lived in some standard way where you tended to be in places that were actually likely to have been passed through before, that the detector yeah. would, even to the extent that it misfired occasionally, very quickly correct to where you actually are. Yeah. And that having displaced yourself by a thousand miles, um, its tendency to uh, fire and then not know what to do because it can't correct to anywhere might cause something like this. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe there's some some likelihood to that, some novelty to this. So obviously the prediction of that would be that, you know, if you interviewed aboriginals in their ancestral habitat and you said, hey, what's your word for deja vu? They might not have one right. or know what you were talking about. Yeah, exactly. Exactly.